Hey, g'day, how you's all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, and Steve will be coming in and out of the video as well. Now, this is going to be a quick and easy tutorial because I've noticed a lot of subscribers are having trouble knowing what brush I use for blending, how much retarder to use, and what all the procedures are, okay? Now, how I'm getting, this is virtually my style of painting, all these blending smooth merges of the colours. So this is going to be a video to show all those people out there that are having trouble how to accomplish that. It's going to show you how to accomplish it. Now, we need to know what brush we're going to use. Now most times you'll go and buy a 2 inch brush from the hardware, the big depot stores or bunning stores here in Australia. You get a 2 inch brush, 9 times out of 10. When you buy them, where are we? I'm looking at my monitor down there. Um, see the surface area on the edge of that? It's pretty, pretty narrow. That's because it's brand new. Brand new. I always smash mine a lot. You'll hear me doing I'll just smash the brush and dry it. What that does, this is an old one that's worn. This is my magic blending brush. Now look at the surface area on that one compared to a brand new one. Okay. This surface area is flat across there. Sometimes you might buy a brush, which I don't have one on me, or maybe this one, but if anything, when you look at the plane of the surface, it's convex, it's like a hump, if anything, okay? We want something that is flat. That's going to allow you, where are we? When you're blending, you can blend flat, you can blend with the tip, or you're sort of dancing around. When it's got that hump on it, it makes it difficult. So that's virtually the type of brush you need. Where do you get them from? I don't know. Go to hardware stores, depot stores, bunning stores, the paint sections, painting stores, and just find the normal household brushes, just a normal paint brush you use for cutting in. The painters use it when they come and paint your house. And there's all different widths. I use a two inch brush. Now, also, we're using a medium. I use a medium all the time for my retarder. I mean for my blending. And the medium is a retarder. Those of you who do not know what a medium is, a medium is something you are adding to your paints to get it thicker, textured, wetter, stays wet longer. All those different things are called a medium. So the medium we want is retarder. Now why I use that, let's grab a painting for an example. Um, this one here. Without it, for beginners, a beginner can pull something off like this, okay? Now with it, it makes it more achievable to get these colours blending and merging together like an oil paint, okay? Without it, acrylics can be very dry and chalky looking if you're not advanced from beginning, okay? So to me, there's a beginner, someone that's a beginning, and there's someone more advanced. I would class myself as an advanced painter, and I'm trying to teach people out there who are beginners, you can pull something off like this if you follow my ways of doing it, okay? So we're going to attack this canvas board, all right? We're not going to muck around, we're going to get right onto it, and I'm going to show you from start to finish the blending parts. All right, we'll just cross over to Steve and see what he's doing, eh? All righty, we're starting off with a canvas. The first thing I do to a canvas is we're going to spray it. Now, this is the procedure to get all the way I blend done. We've got a, a canvas board. I can't, the better the canvas, the better you'll get. The better quality paints, the better you'll get as well, eh? Now, I've got a squirt bottle, a spray bottle with just water in it. No magical stuff, it's just water. And we giving it a nice... It's got a nice film of sprayed water on there, okay? That was so easy, wasn't it? You can do that. Now, down on my palette, right, I'm going to grab a brush to put the, the paint onto the canvas. Now I've got my white with impasto in it. That's just a soft white. It's real, 
Look how soft that is. Can you see? It's not a structured paint. It's not thick. And I've got a puddle of retarder there. So see that? I've put some retarder on my brush. Now I'm getting the paint and mixing the retarder into there. All right, now we're going to get that on there. This is acting as a white base to add your colours. I don't even know what we're going to paint here. That's a bit of a mistake, not knowing what to paint. Anyway, sometimes you look across your canvas in the light, you can see where you've missed out. I just get it on, get it all on. Don't worry about your brush marks. Okay. And if you feel your climate's drier than somewhere else, you might have to add extra water, extra retarder. Work out your climate situation. We've got retarder in all that white paint. Now, whatever we put on there is going to blend and merge very nicely. Some subscribers are asking how much do you, how much retarder do you have to mix with your paint? Well, like I said before, depends on your climate where you are. But just be a mad scientist like I am and add what you reckon. But if you reckon your climate's cool and it's taken too long and it's too wet and add less, simple. All right, now that is done. All right, down here I've got dioxine purple with retarder. So this is going to be the dark corners of the painting. Okay, so I'm putting my brush, mixing that retarder like I did with the white earlier on. Now we want some... Now this is white, it's very wet, okay? I don't want to push this in with the brush because it'll start lightening this up. So what I do, I get it on there. That brush is full of business. It's getting busy with that dioxine and that's what you want in a situation like this. Now I'm going to put it on. This is for the, the corners. I'm putting it on. I can already see it's trying to pick up that white, but I'm not too fussed. So we, this is where I want the dark bits in the sky, sort of like there, okay? See that? That was bloody easy. You can do that. Put that on your palette down there. Grab your blending brush. Now we're going to blend. Now you've got to blend. How about you get a bit closer so you can just see how I'm going to blend this. Okay, now I'm not just going to put it on and move it like this. You've got to put it on, twist, and hit, make contact, and then start moving. Not like this and going like that. No, you're not dancing, you're painting. All right, so watch over here. Let's go. It's wet. Look at that. It's, it's mixing beautiful. Dance with it. Tickle the friggin' hell out of it. And if you look carefully, you can see dark and light. Oh, that's beautiful. Smash the brush on your shirt, on your apron, on your partner, on your dog, on your cat, whatever makes you happy. Now blend it. Now see what I'm doing? I'm blending this, but I'm going up and down as I'm twirling as well. I'm sort of tickling it. Okay? And that has made it nicely blended in my eyes. That's what I look for. Okay, the brush has picked up paint. Bang it, bash it, smash it on your shirt table again. Come across here. Okay. Because we're going to put some good old sexy phalo into this. Watch what happens when I just go like this. Uh, see what it's doing? That's made that all one tone. And it's not quite what we're looking for. We're looking for in and outs, darks and lights. It just makes it look more artistic. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we're going to add some, we'll use phalo blue in this one, okay? Okay, down here I've got phalo blue and a puddle of retarder. So I'm going to load up my brush I'm going to use to put the paint onto the canvas with. All right, so same thing again. I want to kind of get this on to there we've put it on how do we want yeah like that I've cleaned my blending brush ready to go again so there's a lot of putting down cleaning up getting ready to the next stage okay now we're blending the blue so we'll 
blend that the same way I showed you with the deoxine and because we want to merge these two colors together okay now see my paintbrush is picking up paint as I'm going that's why it's important look at it to dry it off a bit now I'm gonna blend where they meet some more again nice and soft up and down on the board with the brush not on it and staying there I'm coming on and off I'm grabbing the fan brush because see we've got dark and blue here just to break that up some of that dioxine that was on the board there I want to come from the purple and bring it in bang your brush start in the purple and we're gonna transfer that into the blue just so we're getting some darker colors into the blue as well it's sort of mixed up okay like that and we'll get a bit more maybe on the top or push it on sort of like doing mist and clouds and blend it using a good two inch brush like I showed you in the beginning of this video all right so we've got our two colors done now we're ready to see the bottom here though we'll fix that up I'll wipe the brush I'll come across the bottom with my phalo blue that's still in there come across here now because that's an horizon line I suppose it won't hurt pick up a bit of white I just picked up some white in that brush get it in there that's it just so as our bottoms a bit lighter than the top all right now we're going to add some mist and clouds and a moon all this entails in all this needs blending okay so I'm getting my fan brush something to put the paint onto the canvas with and it's a good quality structured paint this one okay it's not that thin gesso stuff I use to prime the board up titanium white now work out where you want some mist so it's just a matter of watch this it's very easy I've done this in many videos before that grab your blending brush it's all ready to rock and roll nothing stopping you only you are stopping yourself now we're going to blend tickle it blend it you want to sort of find that smoky look out of it you know move your brush around if you need to don't just feel you got to do it in one way and get bloody comfortable make sure you're comfortable even if you've got to stop and put the damn kettle on do that all right we're getting there so there's a bit of mist on one side and we'll probably put a bit of mist on the other side now this this white has no retarder in it it's just white now we'll put some about maybe there how's that looking yep okay let's blend that ah oh, that's blending nicely okay I can feel the brush picking up paint I'm wiping it again okay it's nice and dry again ready to do its job sometimes art requires a lot of thinking don't think someone else does it the right way and you're trying to do it the way they do it if you feel something needs to work for you adopt that and do it that's what art's all about you've got to think sometimes and you can feel this isn't working but if I did it the another way it will work that's what it's all about washing your brushes as well knowing when things got to be clean and whatnot is a big must it's, it helps doing it this way okay now we'll put a bit here let's say okay this brush we're gonna blend that can you see that okay yeah. see I'm dancing very light pushing it okay 
and we're getting some nice wipe your brush that's our mist in the sky now we're going to put some clouds on here you subscribers out there I love what you do for me we're helping each other out but someone keeps always asking why do I wear gloves I work with my hands a lot see all that paint on them it's so beautiful to take that off and I don't have to wash it out right we got our clean I'm using my hog bristle fan brush it's just what I like to do my clouds in it creates this style of clouds that I'm used to doing it works for me so I stick with it there's other ways you can do clouds other brushes you can use okay it's totally up to you you can use those brushes and those shapes of clouds with this as well it's just that I do it in this shape now normally I'll put some how can we do some clouds here God, I'll put see if we have a geez I'm always doing bloody moons if we're having a moon here all right I'm just creating the top edge of the cloud I shouldn't have put it there because I'm gonna rub out there see that's what I created that top edge there of the cloud okay now we're going to blend from just under halfway down into the atmosphere okay dancing it sometimes tickle the top if you need to and you're creating that shadow look in your cloud that's a simple easy cloud for anybody to do beginner advanced whatever bring it down now you always put another one in front of it to give it some friends like it's just on its own it looks a bit empty so clean your brush again load her up now leaving this shadowed tony color there don't come right up start again doing another cloud dance this around any old way I always finish them up with a line as you know drop your brush and start blending now if you're in a humid area where the temperature is warmer and drier you might have to work quicker or add more retarder now I'm blending this down using my brush different angles so I'm getting all these different looks and aspects of cloudy sort of images onto the canvas there any bits that look a bit deculated get up there and blend them down but that's pretty much now I'll blend that down into the atmosphere and nine times out of ten I put little long horizon ones on there like I've done oh you can't see it but little little long ones across the bottom of the atmosphere all right I'm gonna finish blending this let's cross over to Steve see what he's up to okay at this stage everything is still wet we haven't blow dried nothing because if I blow dried that this blending becomes a lot harder to accomplish okay we'll put some see we've got that mist there so I virtually want to keep some clouds watch this again I'll actually I'll bring you right in so you can see exactly what I'm doing all right alrighty you're close enough fair enough all right now let's go I got me brush loaded up and I'm gonna criss cross sometimes I go on and off and sometimes I'm going on sliding it and ugh, like that see ugh. and this edge here is the cloud you see ugh, ugh, uh, uh, it's just so bloody easy and see here it's nothing we'll bring that like that that is ready to blend so we've got our brush it's still from blending this side I've just kept wiping it on my towel roll and we're gonna blend watch see I'm starting the motor okay she's going did it like a chainsaw or something now we're turning now we start making contact or oh, come off a bit you know pass it over there coming around here like that we're still going this is what it's all about wipe your brush again come down make some contact again that's what it's all about 
pretend you're operating heavy machinery. Now see here, we want to get that shadowy tone in there. So you can start pressing heavy. These are what I was showing Diana Hexter yesterday. We had fun yesterday. We did a painting and had some cake and cups of tea. Anybody ever come to Australia and want to look me up, you're more than welcome to come over. We get some paint out, get to meet each other and do a bit of bloody painting. Now, as, as always, sometimes I tickle those top bits up. Like you might see other tutorials, Bob Ross or something, they'll flick it up but they're using oils. I don't do that in my style, I just don't. It works for oils because they're more wet and the colours can stretch and pull within each other. It works great for them but I'm teaching acrylics only and I only paint in acrylics. Okay, we've blended that down, ready to give him a brother, okay? All right, we'll give this brother on there. Work out how low to put it. Drop him, smash, and blend. And we're blending down into the atmosphere, okay? My next proper painting lesson is going to be lightning. So I hope you can join in and watch me paint some beautiful, sharp, dark lit sky with some lightning dancing across the sky. Real easy to do. All right, we'll just finish this up with some, maybe one there. Blend him down. I want that into the atmosphere. I'm not going to go any lower because I think I worked out what I might be able to do for the bottom of this. That's ready to put a maybe some water or something there. Okay, that is the end. If this was a painting I was doing as a picture with, you know, maybe water or a jetty or something like I did over there, that is the end of my blending, okay? It was that simple. All right, so I'm going to blow dry that. And then we'll, we'll put a moon on there, maybe some more darker features in the sky, you know, that bullshit effect, okay? That is the basics of blending. Let's just cross over to Steve and see what he's up to, eh? See, I might do a bit of a different moon, okay? I'll use this round sponge. Now, I'm even getting questions on this. I found that in the art supply, it just looked like something that'll come in handy, okay, and it does. Now, how we get that sun piercing through a sky, it's there, we'll do the same with a moon. So I'm just going to get my white, twist it, and push it into there, okay? Work out where I want my moon, which is about here. I'm twisting it onto there, okay? Look at that, that was damn easy. But I don't want it sharp and hard and carrying on like he's the king of the mountain. I want everybody to be even in this painting, okay? So, I stopped drying it because I want to do it this way, okay? So, this, we'll just sort of dab a bit of the paint out of it. We'll come back in the middle, okay? Now start dancing around, like I said before. And we're bringing the buffalo girls on the outside or the trailer park girls. And as you come around, that's slowly getting lighter and lighter. And it's up to you how you can create the, the radius of that. If you go crooked, that's your problem. I'm just going to blend this before it's too dry. You, you can leave it like that. I, I prefer to let any, uh, any beginners leaving it like that. Don't want to complicate yourself with too many tasks. Advanced painters can carry on and do what I'm doing here. This is just the glare of our moon. See, I've just sort of smeared a little bit onto that, not too much, just to give our moon... <coughs> there, I'll bring you in. All right, so we've finished our moon with a bit of a glare. Everything's done. Now, this glare has obviously lightened up a bit of this, so I want to transfer, getting some more deoxine. Without, um, I might just put a a dabble of retarder in it, just a little bit, not too much. If you put too much in it, it's like turning your paint to water. Now we want to sort of bring some dark bits back in front of that, okay? Because these can even be some dark clouds. 
you know, the light's on the back of him, so the front is dark. Just to create a bit more depth into your painting. Okay, we'll come across the other side. And this is virtually going to finish up the sky. Hang on, I might put some there. Try not to overkill it. <sighs> Take the time out to breathe too, eh? Sometimes I forget to breathe. You just get so intoxicated in what you're doing and you hold your breath and you go for it like a mad dog. See, I've brought that in, but I've got to transfer it back there as well. Otherwise, the, the blending will stick out like and canines nuts. We'll just cross over to Steve and see what he's up to before we wrap this up, okay? Need to add some of this mist back where we killed it. I've got to just do a bit and stop because it's a lot drier than when we first started with the retarder. Because as you can see, that purple. Now these are not clouds, they're mist. So you've got to make sure they're softer and more translucent than your clouds. Otherwise everything will look too cloudy. And we'll give this thing a frame also at the end. You can see the difference when you've done a painting. It looks okay. And you, you put a, a frame on top of it and it looks quite good. So let's put a frame on this, eh? All right. That's pretty much how we need to blend those procedures, using those subjects, using those brushes and colours. Use whatever colour you want, but it all works the same principle. We'll put a frame on this just to show you how great it finishes a painting off. Look at that, eh? Now, I'll probably finish this off on camera, maybe put some water. I don't know. I'll do something on it. And um, please don't ask for a tutorial on that finished photo when it's finished because this it'll just be the addings on of to this, okay? Any more trouble you have, be sure to message me. Follow me on Facebook. Just type in Ianapolis. Search and click on the name Ianapolis. Not Ianapolis Harris, just Ianapolis. Follow me on YouTube. Share every time you see my videos. Like and subscribe. I love you all. I'm nearly hitting 10,000 subscribers, so let's help get me there. Hope you like what I showed you today. All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.